So going back to, to software escrow, um, the, it's split really into two key areas, and there's lots of different variations under those two areas. You've got, you've got the legal element, uh, the contractual part of software escrow, which gives customers um, uh, or licensees, sorry, on those agreements, the, the ability to, um, to enact business continuity. And then you've got the verification or the technical consulting element of it, which, enab which essentially gives um, assurances around that continuity and making sure that it can be utilized um, in that stressed exit scenario. So from a from a contractual perspective, um, it's the the contracts are, are quite simple, really. I think that the last time I looked, they vary between sort of eight and twelve pages, depending on the um, on the type of arrangement that you have in place, whether it be on premise or cloud. Um, but some of the key sort of um, the key clauses, or the key clause, I suppose, that, that, that is of, of most use or most relevance in that contract to, to both the ISV partners that we work with and also the licensees, is around the release events. And, and Wayne has touched base on that just a minute ago. And those release events um, are essentially when, uh, essentially that the scenario whereby the licensee would get access to the material that's held under these agreements. The material that's generally held under, under these agreements is is source code. I'd say probably over ninety percent of of the agreements that we hold and uh, and hold today um, are related to source code for applications that is held within escrow. There's different variations in those agreements. We have single license agreements for sort of a, a three-party arrangement and then multi-license agreements for more of a one-to-many arrangements for, for sort of more generic and standard software that can benefit multiple customers. Um, and essentially, those contracts give those licensees um, as part of that contract the ability to access that source code and that material in that release event scenario, which to, to Wayne's point is um, is commonly reflected as a, as a stressed exit scenario with, with certainly with financial institutions. In relation to, um, I suppose, the verification element of that, essentially what the verification services does uh, do at a very, very high level is make sure that whatever material that we that we hold in escrow can be uh, tested and it is fit for purpose. So we go through the testing process generally with the ISV and the actual developers themselves to try and soak up as much knowledge as possible that, be, what would, that would be required to um, restore a service after, after a stressed exit. Um, from an on-premise perspective, the expectation is that potentially the service may deteriorate over time uh, and the, the testing and services that we allow accommodate for that. Um, and then you can venture and sort the cloud world where the potential failure may be a bit more immediate, especially if a, um, if a cloud provider is being used. But ultimately, this verification testing serves a number of different purposes. A, that gives, gives the licensees the assurance on these agreements that ultimately the material is fit for purpose, it's the correct version, and it can be utilized in the scenario where it's supposed to be utilized. And B, it is good um, in terms of from a regulatory perspective, it is evidence that there is testing of the plan. So if the plan is to implement software escrow for a stressed exit scenario, the verification element of that is the testing part of that, that overall solution. We test that the source code works. We test that the source code is complete. And ultimately, as a result of that, we generate our documentation and certificates, which we provide to all parties of the agreement, so ISVs and also the licensees, as evidence that that activity has taken place on a certain date on the certain application um, and so on and so forth. And that is, is uh, again, the, the agreement side of this and also the verification is the service that is most commonly teamed to um, uh, demonstrate to the regulator that the trust exit scenario has been accounted for and, and is tested regularly.